After 20 nights in multiple weather conditions, I'm ready to give my full review on the Z-Pax Pleximid. What's going on everybody? I'm Frozen, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you know when I post new content. Let's get to this review. The Pleximid is a one-person, non-freestanding tent that requires one trekking pole and six stakes. You can add four additional stakes to pull out the sides for some extra room, but personally, I've never needed to do that, and the room that it gives you is minimal in my opinion. The tent material consists of a one ounce per square yard DCF for the floor, a 0.67 ounce per square yard bug net, and a nicely sized rainbow zipper with dual pulls. The canopy is made up of 0.55 ounce per square yard DCF. This tent comes in a multitude of colors, and certain colors like burnt orange, dirt, and spruce green canopies are a bit heavier at 0.7 ounce per square yard DCF. On my scale, the tent itself weighs 15.4 ounces, or 436 grams. The space inside the tent comes in at seven and a half feet in length and 28 inches in width, but it has a bump out in the center of the tent for gear storage or a small dog like my Beagle Blaze. The center of the tent extends to 35 inches. The DCF material in bright conditions will allow someone on the outside of the tent to see a silhouette, but not in enough detail where privacy would be a concern. z -Pack says you should set the tent up by staking out the four corners first and then inserting a trekking pole extended 48 inches, followed by guying out the door, then finally staking out the back. However, in my numerous setups, I found that to be really tedious as I needed to reposition all four corner stakes to get the floor to be even and at the correct angle. I personally found it faster and easier just to stake out the two back corners, insert the trekking pole, guy out the door, and then guy out everything else. This option allows me to only need to reposition the back two stakes at the end of the setup to get the angle correct. It's quicker to reposition two stakes instead of four. Now, getting a perfect pitch on this thing takes a lot of practice, but once you figure out all of its quirks, you should be able to set it up perfectly every time. The biggest tip I can give you about setting up the tent is making sure the bug net wall slightly angles outwards, which allows you to leave the doors open in a light rain. The roof of this tent is very unique in that it has two titanium rods that make its peak. This allows for more room inside the tent without the need for the ceiling of the tent to be higher than 48 inches to achieve the same angle. A few weeks into testing the tent, I felt like the titanium rods were just gonna pop out of their holders and poke a hole through the canopy. They were really tight. So I took them out and shaved about an eighth of an inch off of each side. Now, if you decide to do this as well, you can use a grinding wheel, but make sure you go around the outer edge of the rod corners to smooth out the rough edges as the titanium will kind of fold over and kind of melt as it heats up. I haven't had the problem since, and I will be making the same recommendation to Z-Packs. Now inside the tent is a mesh pocket that you can use to store a phone, headlamp, or any other small items. I found this a really nice addition, but it does weigh down the bathtub floor a bit, but it's not really an issue. The doors can be set up to seal out bad weather, or can be pitched completely independently. You can also completely pull the doors back to allow maximum ventilation using the door's toggle system, and this is how I slept in the tent most nights. The door is attached to this custom metal hook that is on pretty much all of the z packs tents. The tent has adequate room for shorter people like me at 5'6", but I feel like anyone over 5'9 will need to sleep diagonally to avoid condensation getting on your quilt or sleeping bag foot box. If you're over 6 feet tall, I'd personally look at a different tent. When I'm in adverse conditions and need to shut the doors, I find the tent walls have a lot of condensation accumulated on them, so bring a chamois or a buff and wipe the tent down in the morning. The slope of the tent walls drain the condensation very well, and they let the water run out of the attached bug netting all the way around the tent. There are several shock cord attachment points along the bathtub floor that allows you to raise the floor as necessary so you can keep the angle of the bug netting attached to the floor where the condensation runs out sloped. On one particular trip, however, I did have a few drops of condensation make it to my quilt from the peak of the tent. Upon inspection, I found that there was a single strand of thread sticking up out of the peak. This was fixed easily by applying a small piece of included DCF tape, and I haven't had an issue since. Speaking of stitching, I've been hearing a lot about how z -Packs has some quality control issues with their stitching, but other than that single strand on the peak, everything was absolutely flawless. What led me to choose this tent over any other tent on the market was its low weight and small footprint. I don't like taking up a lot of space when I camp and the Plexman gives me the ability to fit into tight spaces. I also really like the ability that I can pitch each door independently and that the height of the tent is just high enough for me to sit up and get changed comfortably without hitting my head on the roof. Another thing I love about the tent is how roomy this is for a one person tent. z -Packs even markets the tent as a one and a half person tent, though fitting a second sleeping pad in it you know, for a small child is out of the question. 
You can store your backpack inside or outside underneath the vestibule, even if only one door is open. It also allows me to charge my electronics without getting in the way of my constant tossing and turning when I sleep. This tent is very stable in super windy conditions, and there's barely any flapping of material as long as you use the extra toggle to secure the doors. I feel confident in the tent's ability to withstand the elements in heavy wind as long as your tent stakes hold. Now, a minor complaint I have is that the rainbow zipper is nearly impossible to operate with one hand. You have to pull the side down while pulling the zipper away, but at its weight range for the bug netting, I can completely understand this. Another thing I don't like is the amount of condensation you can expect when both doors are closed up. You can fortunately leave both doors open in light rain, which I love, but you really need to learn how to properly set up the tent before you can even think about that. Again, keep the bug net angled to allow the peak of the tent to overhang just a bit. Any single wall tent is going to have condensation issues, but this is the Plexamid's biggest problem. Now this condensation issue fortunately wasn't as bad after learning to set it up properly, but I think a lot of new Plexamid owners will get frustrated quickly about this, especially people that don't take terrain into consideration when making camp. And what I mean by that is those that set up next to a stream or an open field without tree cover from the dew. The setup of this tent has a steep learning curve and requires like an aha moment to take full advantage of the cross ventilation. The only other minor complaint I have is because of the titanium rods in the peak, you are really limited in the way that this tent can get packed up. When I first got the tent, I tried folding it in half, then folding it in half again, followed by folding the peak over itself until I could fit it in the stuff sack. Now, especially if it's raining, I just shove the peak inside the bag first and then stuff the whole tent in the bag. This lets me pack up the tent more quickly, but it takes up more volume than it would if you spent time to fold it up the right way. One final caveat to this is the custom metal hook. You gotta be really careful that this thing doesn't get caught on the tent body or bug netting, as several people, including my buddy Gary, have had this issue where it rips through the material. Put the hook in the bag last or wrap the line around the tent and make sure it's not going to tear a hole anywhere. Speaking of that custom metal hook, mine actually broke during the filming of this review. I cannot put the blame on Z-Packs as they are not the makers of the hook. As with all product reviews, I like to test the vendor's support reaction time and come up with like a generic question or support need uh, and judge them based on their answer. I told Z-Pack support that my hook broke and within three minutes I had a customer service rep email me back asking me for an address on where to send a replacement. I've heard people saying Z-Pack support takes a long time to reply to people, but my interactions have always been consistently excellent. I think that when someone has one bad experience, they try to get everyone to get their pitchforks out on social media and the word just spreads quickly. After my metal hook broke, it got me thinking, what if this would have happened on the trail? What would I have done? Adverse weather conditions, it could have been downpouring. And I found a really simple solution. And that solution was just to take the, the cord that guys out the door end and just wrap it through the two plastic hooks of the door and do a top line hitch. And that worked out really well. In summary, the Plexamid is a very good tent. I love the interior space, the small footprint. It's lightweight, but stable design. And I do recommend this tent for shorter people under five foot 10. It does suffer from condensation issues, but after learning to set up the tent correctly, it can be minimized and controlled, but be prepared to wipe it down each morning before you pack it up. If you're going to be out for an extended period of time, make sure you bring a chamois or a buff. Personally, I haven't used a ground sheet with this tent, and that's because I feel the one ounce per square yard DCF provides adequate puncture and abrasion resistance, and I've not had an issue. The tent costs $575, and if given the option between this tent and the duplex, a two-person tent with two vestibules and better ventilation, I honestly would go with the duplex, if you don't mind the larger footprint. For an extra $75 and less than four ounces, I do think the upgrade is worth it if you are on the fence between the two. So that is just my experience with the Z-Pax Plexamid. If you own this one as well, put your thoughts down in the comments. I'm sure other people would appreciate that. And if you found any use in this video, click that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Now, if you hated this video, be sure you let me know about it by clicking that thumbs down button twice. I'd also love to know what tent you are using, so leave me a message down in the comments and feel free to ask me any additional questions you have about the Plexamid. I'm Frozen, and I'll see you on the trail, everybody. Thanks for watching.